So we will start right away with a Bernoulli gate that will add chance and probability to the incoming triggers and will generate a rhythm for us. And we will use branches for mutable instruments, um, which is also available as hardware. And in VCV, it's called the Bernoulli gate. And what we will do is we will use a clock and add probability to it. So here, here I have a clock multiplied by four and I'm using a clock multiplied by four because I want 16th notes fill. So let's send it to the upper section of branches and I will use output A to trigger tremor 2. And for now, let's take the probability control all the way to the right and unmute tremor. So we get nothing because there's a 100% chance that this clock will come out of output B. And um, this is how we set the probability for now. But if we start turning the probability control in the direction of output A, we will get more and more kicks until we'll get all of them, all of the triggers, all of the clocks. Just like this. But let's set it to about three o'clock here. Now, something to keep in mind, it says that it's about 80%, but that's relative to output B. So there's 80% chance that this signal will come out of output B and 20% chance that it will come out of output A. So again, branches or the Bernoulli gate will output the incoming signal either from output A or from output B according to the probability control. So we choose the length of the notes. In this case, we have 16th notes because the clock is multiplied by four and we set the probability and branches will generate the rhythm for us. Let's do the same with the Hyatt. I have here the Hyatt module from Hora. And the nice feature of branches is that the inputs are normaled. So if nothing is connected to the lower input, it will receive the signal from the upper input. So let's use the lower A output to trigger the Hyatt. Let's set the probability to about nine o'clock. And now we can add even more probability for the open hats. So I will use another module that is similar to branches. It's called chances <laughs> it will work uh, more or less the same so let's send output b of the lower branches to chances and we will leave the probability for now uh, at 50 percent and use output a to trigger the open hyatt And again, this is without a sequencer or anything, we're just using the clock and probability. Okay, I have here also a snare drum and I want to show you the latch mode, but first let's use a different clock multiplication. I will use a multiplication of two, as you can see here. I don't want to have a 16th notes fill on the snare. So let's use output A to trigger the snare drum. This is the snare drum also from Hora. Now this is nice and all, but it's a bit too much snare. I don't want to have a few hits one after the other. And that's where the latch mode, uh, latch mode is very useful. You can switch it here with this switch here. So now, let's change the probability a bit. So now instead of outputting the clock, Chances will leave the output high as long as this output is chosen. So in this case, as long as output A is chosen, there will come out a gate out of it instead of the clock. So it will latch to output A. We can see this also on the scope. You can see the gates. And again, this will make sure that we will not get snare hits one after the other. By the way, this feature is also available on branches. You can either use this um, button here for either sections or in the right-click menu, you have channel one mode toggle or latch. 
So this feature is also available on branches. Now, in interestingly, <laughs> interestingly enough, the more we set the probability toward output A, the less snares we will get because output A will just stay high. So if I take it all the way to output A, you can see the gate just stays high and it's not triggering or gating anything. To make this a bit more in uh, interesting, I have here a carpless strong voice, basically um, a peak of noise going to a short delay. So I have here white noise going to a band pass filter. This is um, tangents from Volt. I have also some modulation here on the cutoff point. This is going to a VCA and to a delay. And you can see that the delay times are quite short. So we get a sort of a carpless strong voice. Also the decay of the envelope is also quite short. So it's just a short burst of noise. This is unmuted. And now we need uh, something to gate or trigger the envelope. So I will use output B. Very nice. And again, this is all coming from the clock. There are many more ways to experiment with this. You can modulate the probability. You can add more probability to the probability. <laughs> you can use different clocks, different triggers. And, but something that's always nice is to add some stability to all of this. So here I have a Euclidean sequencer. I have here Eugene sequencing the percussive vibration. So it will sound like this. And I also have a one-shot sequence. I'm using a burst generator to trigger the random function on the grid sequencer from JW. This is sequencing Terraform, which is going through some delay. I have sample and hold modulating uh, many things here and also some noise. I have pink noise in this case. Going to the FM input just to add more character to the sound. So it will sound like this. So now we look at clock dividers. Now I know clock dividers don't sound so generative at first, but just because they are called clock dividers doesn't mean we have to use steady clock signals. So here I'm using more or less the same like we did before with the Bernoulli gate with branches. And um, this time I'm using a sequencer. I'm using the uh, step sequencer, the trigger sequencer from count modular. And um, just because I want probability on certain steps. So I have here the deep module from Hora and I'm sending the first sequence through a Bernoulli gate to trigger the uh, deep module to sound like this. And I have sequences C and D set to 10 steps and they trigger the accent and also the choke. So it gives a bit more movement to the sound. I have here another sequence going again through branches through the lower part and is triggering a closed hi-hat. Now sequence G is set to seven steps and this is sequencing the open hat but as you can see it's going first through a mult and that's because of the one sample delay so each module you add in the chain will add a delay of one sample and as you can see i have the trigger for the closed hat going first through branches which will add one sample of delay so if i don't use a mult you can hear 
we get a sort of a wonky rhythm that in this case I don't want, so that's why I add the mult, just to make sure both triggers will arrive at the same time, and the rhythm will be nice and tight. So this is the basic rhythm I got, and I want to add more elements to it, but I want the modules to decide when those voices will play. So I have here the noise output of the hi-hat going to a band pass filter, there's also some modulation here. This is going to a VCA, and I have a short envelope or a, an envelope with some attack actually controlling this VCA. This is how it will sound like. It's going also through some delay. Now we have also a clock divider, this one is from count modular. And what we will do is we will use the triggers from branches to drive the clock divider. So the triggers will be irregular, unlike a steady clock. And we will get interesting and ever changing results. So let's use the B output from the upper chances to the clock divider. And then we'll use the clock divided by 16, let's say, to trigger the envelope. So now we get triggers that are being generated and affected by the random triggers from branches, but less dense. Let's wait for it one more time, because it's fun. Oh yeah. I have here another voice. This is coming from the metal output of uh, the Hyatt module. Again, it's going through a band pass filter and the VCA and envelope. And in this case, it's going again through some delay, but I have the delay with the feedback loop. So I have the delay going to a filter and the filter going back to the delay. Um, by the way, I'm using the teleport modules. You can see them here, the inputs and outputs, just to make the, to keep the patch a bit more clean or a bit cleaner. So I have the clock coming out of here and I have the voices going in here. And this is being teleported to the mixer, the audio to the mixer, and the clock is coming from the clock module. Just to not have so many cables going everywhere just to keep this a bit cleaner so now let's use output b of the second um, branches here to the clock divider now we'll use the clock divided by 32 to trigger this voice a sort of a rim shot i guess let's wait for it very nice so i get we get something ever changing and less dense because we are dividing the irregular triggers from branches. Let's wait for it one more time. Oh yeah. Okay, I have here another example. I have two FM voices with two FM operators. One of them, one pair is uh, tuned to G. They are both going through some delay. And now let's use, for example, the divided clock, divided by two clock from the upper one to trigger or to gate the lower, uh, the first FM operators. And the divided by two from the lower one to trigger those FM operators. So again, we get a nice rhythm which we did not sequence. This is generated by the modules themselves with the help of a clock divider, two clock dividers. Let's add again some stability here with the bass. So I have a few waveforms, three waveforms of the TSL being mixed with the VCV mixer and I have an envelope opening this mixer this is going through a Lopez filter and I have the sec 3 um, triggering the envelope and also modulating a few parameters and I have here another envelope a really short envelope going to the 
FM input of the TSL, just to add a bit more punch to the sound, it will sound like this. And I have here also a sort of a glitchy sound, so I have the output of this filter from the, with the TSL voice going to a high pass filter and this is going to a delay and I have quite a lot of modulation on the delay time so we get something a bit more glitchy. So I want to show you something before we continue, and that is the concept of everything is control voltage. I have here a kick and a dual attenuverter from Befaco, so I can send offset or constant voltage, and also a voltmeter, so we can see the amount of volts coming out. Now on the kick module, you can see it here, it says trig in or trigger in, and triggers are also control voltage, also gates, also clocks, everything is control voltage. So what it means basically is that whenever the incoming voltage, control voltage passes a certain point, a certain level, the kick will be triggered. So you will have a look here on the voltmeter, and then we start raising the offset, let's see, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 8, opalach, 1 volt. Whenever the signal, the control voltage goes above 1 volt, it will trigger the kick drum. So even though it says trigger in, it doesn't mean we have to use only triggers, we can use other types of control voltage. For example, sample and hold, I have here sample and hold from the sample and hold from Bog Audio. And you can see on the scope that we uh, the sample and hold will generate a stepped random signal that will randomly go above one volt, which means that we can use sample and hold to generate rhythms for us. So here again, I have the kick and I have also a closed hi-hats. Those are both from Autodafe. So let's use the two sections of the sample and hold to trigger them. And we get a rhythm generated by the sample and hold. Now we can again use a clock divider, for example, to add a snare drum. And again, it will add it not too often. So I will use the sample and hold to the clock divider and I have a clock division of four, triggering the snare. So we get a nice rhythm. Let's maybe take it a bit down. Okay, now another interesting module similar to sample and hold is the shift register. This module, uh, module will also sample the incoming signal. In this case, I'm using white noise, so it's basically like the sample and hold. Um, by the way, if you are not familiar with sample and hold or shift registers, I created a series of videos all about the different building blocks of modular, uh, links in the description. But anyway, the shift register will also shift the sample signal through its outputs and um, so I'm using a few outputs to trigger four FM operators I have each of them tuned to a different note as you can see here and I'm using again different triggers to trigger them they are being mixed and I'm using oct to add some movement to everything this is going through the briatus just for some saturation and a delay so let's have a listen to this Without the delay, it will sound like this. You can hear the interesting rhythm. I 
Okay, I also have here a sort of a sub base with Basil from Vult. Now this is going through a VCA and I'm using the DADSR envelope from Borg Audio because it has an inverted output that I can use to sidechain this bass. So first of all, let's listen to it without the sidechaining. But now I can sidechain it with the same triggers that are triggering the kick, which is basically the sample and hold. Get a sort of a side chaining to the sub bass. Now I'm also mixing the drums with the VCV mixer, and this is going to rampage um, just for some destruction and texture. So again, also with sample and hold, you can create interesting generative rhythms. So now we will look at using logic. So here I have the gate sequencer from Impromptu. It's sequencing um, the kick section of tremor 2 and also the noise section for a sort of a um, snare drum and also a closed and open hats to sound like this now with this sequencer we can add also probability so we have the green steps which will play always but we have also yellow steps the first line the first row here is for the kick drum so you can see the yellow steps are steps with probability. So sometimes they will play and sometimes they will not play. Now we can use logic to combine those random triggers and let them generate a rhythm for us. So I have here a rim shot. This one is uh, again from Autodafe. It has also quite a lot of reverb, sand reverb set on this channel. Um, and I want that it will play only when the kick and the open hat are playing together. So only according to the probability of the kick being triggered on step 12. The last row is the row for the open hat. The first row is for the kick. And you can see the kick, this step is with probability. So let's send the kick and the open hat to the logic module, every the logic module form. Um, Bog audio it's called bull and we will use the end output to trigger the rim so only when the kick and the open hat are triggered the rim will also be triggered let's wait for it oh yeah Very nice. We can also use the snare and the highest. The snare is the third row and the highest is the fourth row. So they will meet sometimes here. Again, here we have a yellow note, a yellow step. Sometimes they will meet here and also here and here as well. And this we can use to trigger a clap module. I have here the claps from, <laughs> from Autodafe going through some delay and I have a sample and hold modulating the delay feedback. So let's use again the third and fourth rows. Oh yeah. So we can combine random triggers in all sorts of ways and let the modules decide for us when the different elements will be played thanks to Boolean logic, in this case, and logic. Now all we need to do is add a nice 303 type baseline. So I have here the phrase sequencer, also impromptu. This is sequencing the even VCO, which is going through the base module from Outin, which uh, gives a, a really nice 303 sound to any bass. It will sound like this. Yeah. 
Now this is going through LALA, which is a frequency, it's not a frequency divider, but it will create a division between the highs and lows. So I'm sending the high frequencies to a delay, which will sound like this. Now this is a fun one, we will use a comparator to generate a rhythm for us. Now there are many ways you can use a comparator and I highly encourage you to experiment with different sources. I will use sample and hold. I have one sample and hold going to the input of the comparator and another sample and hold going to the threshold input. So whenever one goes above or under the um, other sample and hold we get a gate and you can see it sort of on the scopes here. Now I'm going to use one of these gates to drive a sequencer that will trigger and modulate a voice. So let's connect the over output to the sequencer over here, the SEC3 from VCV and run the sequencer. The voice I'm using is again deep from Hora and I have the three sequences sequencing all sorts of things. I'm also using, by the way, micro map to see to sequence the drive it has no cv input so i'm using micro map for this this is going through some delay so we get something generative but still a bit repetitive thanks to the sequencer i have here another voice with another sequencer uh, this one is energy it has a built-in sort of VCA slash Lopez gate that I'm using with an envelope. So actually it sh should be like this. <laughs> I'm going again through some delay and now we'll use the under output. So whenever one sample and hold is going below the other one. So we get another sort of generative but still somewhat repetitive sequence. I have here plats as a kick drum and again also here I'm using the teleport modules That's just to make sure this patch is a bit cleaner without cables going everywhere. So I have here a steady bass drum for stability. Oh yeah. Now we can also change this rhythm by changing the threshold, sort of adding offset to the sample and hold, pushing it up and down. Changing the rhythm a bit. Now we can also use two clock multiplications for the sample and hold. I have here another sample and hold and in this case I'm using a clock multiplied by four for one sample and hold and a clock multiplied by two for the second one so they will move separately from one another and create again an interesting rhythm. Again I'm using a comparator just like before and this is triggering a closed hat and an open hat. We can add a nice arpeggio to this, I have here the phrase sequencer again in prompt 2. This is sequencing interzone from valley. Oh yeah. And here is a 
little bonus, until now we looked at different functions that can be done with a variety of modules. So for example, you can use different comparators and different clock dividers. But here are three modules that you can experiment with that will generate rhythms for you. The first one is Triggs from JW. This one here, we can generate or let the module generate a different rhythm for us. You know what, let's use this F here, a clock multiplied by four to run the module. We have four outputs. In this case, I have a sequence of 16 steps. I have here dip again, and I have a snare from SV modular, and again, hi-hat and a open, open hat. So this is a rhythm generated by triggers, Triggs. And the fun thing here, we have an end of cycle output that we can use to trigger the random function. So we get each, with each cycle, we get a different rhythm. So this you can also use for generating generative rhythms. Another one, another one is a classic one. This is the, just a second, let me disconnect here. The Turing machine, of course. Now the Turing machine has the expander, the triggers uh, expander that we can use to trigger all sorts of different things, also rhythms. And the fun thing about it, we can lock those rhythms. Um, so let's use, uh, let's say this one. One, two, three. Let's do this actually. Right, and now I can lock the sequence. If I lock it to the other side, it will double the length, basically reversing the beats. But I can also open this knob just a bit, so it will continue creating new variations. Maybe I can have a, a shorter uh, sequence. So this is also a really nice module for generating random or generative rhythms. Another one, really interesting one, is the clocked random gates from Count Modular. Each gate has a probability control. So you can set the probability of the different um, gates. Basically, more or less, it works like the Bernoulli gate, like branches. You have uh, gates that will stay up as long as this, sort of like the latch mode we saw, will stay up as long as this is um, chosen. Um, row one, we have triggers and we have clocks, which will output a clock for each of those gates. So let's do this, let's use again, let's uh, try and, let's use triggers in this case. Uh, for this, for the snare I will use gates, and for the hi-hat I will use once a clock, and once also gates. So now again we have sort of generative, I can change the probability that they will actually be triggered. Another interesting feature is the single mode. So now only one of those rows will be triggered at a time. So this can also be interesting. So again, you have something to experiment with. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, go experiment with generative rhythms and cheers.